Hey everybody, it's time for another staff car update on this channel. And a couple of weeks ago, when I made a video about Wyoming and its attempts to introduce a resolution to call for the banning of EVs by 2035, I drove my F-150 Lightning and you all enjoyed that slightly unscripted video style. So today I'm going to go and run an errand and pick up some coffee beans because I have not got any coffee beans and I am like... Well, I'm like Elon Musk without a Falcon 9 when I don't have coffee beans to make into lovely coffee. So I'm going to go and run that errand. I'm going to tell you about some of the things that have been going on with the Chevrolet Bolt EV in the process. And yes, this is a Chevrolet Bolt EV that we still own. We used to have two. We now have one. The F-150 Lightning is our other vehicle. So won't you join me? And I promise I'll drive safely. Unlike the other Bolt EV we used to own, which we purchased brand new, we purchased this one used with about 80,000, 90,000 miles on the clock. We purchased it from Platt Auto in Portland, and we've now got just shy of 110,000 miles on the clock. This car has had the battery replaced under warranty as part of Chevrolet's battery recall program. You know, the one that was all about battery fires so we do have a new battery in this car and that brings me to the update so one of the things that happened to this car last year was that we had the battery update carried out and at the time we complained to our local Chevrolet dealership and said hey the car is not showing the number of miles that everyone is reporting the upgraded battery says we should get. For those who don't know, the replacement battery is actually slightly larger in capacity than the car's original battery pack, so we should have seen an increase in range. At the same time, we had a, a service done on this car. It was the 100,000 mile service, I believe. And shortly after that service, Erin was driving this car for Transport Evolved, we were filming, and noted that the brakes didn't seem to work very well. Upon investigation, we discovered that the brake reservoir was not full and the brakes were not properly operating. So we took it back to the Chevrolet dealership and they admitted that they had incorrectly bled the brakes at the previous service. Apparently most cars can use this automatic tool that bleeds all four brakes or brakes for each wheel at the same time. However, for some reason that system cannot be used on this car or the Volt and whoever did the service had used that tool and had incorrectly bled the brakes. So we had that bleed redone free of charge by our local dealership. Let's call them Bob's Chevrolet for the purposes of this video because they're going to come up a little bit later on as well. With the brakes bled, the dealership also noted that when they had switched out the battery pack and replaced it under warranty, they had not carried out the full reprogramming required to give this car the correct capacity and correct range estimate so that was done at the same time and when we got the car back it did give us a slightly larger range estimate right now it is hovering just above freezing and the car was not full when i left and it says i've got a maximum of 197 miles of range remaining a minimum of 136 as you may know the chevrolet bolt gives a range of readings depending on how you drive how cold it is and plenty of other factors and if I drive this very very gingerly I should be able to get 200 miles based on what my state of charge is but if I was to really drive it hard I'd only see 136. I do honestly wish that more more car companies made cars with that feature in mind. 
The next thing that is worth talking about is we got this car ceramic coated at the end of August and we are still working on that video. We've been very lucky to have a very patient partner working with us on that video but essentially the premise of the video was instead of buying a brand new car as it was in 2022 when prices of new cars were very high prices of used cars were very high could you instead either buy a used EV and invest money in it or just keep the existing EV you have if you already have an EV and the purpose behind that was that we wanted to see if you could add extra features to your car that would bring it back on par with a newer model. And the Chevrolet Bolt EV was a perfect example because of the battery recall and some of the available. available. So we paid to have the car professionally detailed. We paid to have the car um, ceramic coated and that gave us a really good jumping point that we could then use to see if we could increase the apparent value of the car. When we started that video, the car had been cleanly detailed. We'd added fresh new rubber mats that were branded for Chevrolet, so official mats. And everything looked really good and everything seemed to be working just great. However, we didn't get to finish it because one of the things we were going to do as part of that video was to add comma AI to the Bolt EV and that requires working with a third party provider for a special adapter pedal that allows the comma 3 to talk to the Bolt and then get effectively semi-autonomous driving. So we ordered the part, it hasn't arrived yet it should be arriving in the next month or so and then we will actually be able to finish the video we'll be able to talk about adding semi-autonomous driving to this car which is pretty incredible using open pilot and opgm which is a great great product and it is a development feature but we wanted to do that so that my partner when they return to working out of an office rather than working from home in about a month's time has a much more chill driving experience getting to and from the office along the freeway in rush hour and that's the reason why we did that so that video is on hold right now uh, it also includes adding a new wireless charging module to this car so that it can wirelessly charge a new iphone um, because the wireless charging module in this doesn't actually charge anything it's old tech so we've added that. We've also added a wireless CarPlay dongle to this car. So we have wireless CarPlay. We will have wireless charging, inductive charging for, a, for an iPhone. And we will also have Open Pilot, which basically gives us all of the functionality that we've wanted in this car that we haven't had. The other thing that we're going to talk about in this video is the experience that we had uh, not so long ago with our with our local dealership and because it requires me to give you a bit of a reenactment I've already filmed that at home so that it's nice and safe so no one is concerned about my driving when we had uh, when we were over the holidays we had some major storms and we live up in, in the foothills of the, of the coastal range and there were quite a number of downed trees and we were out of power for for several days at a time over the course of the holidays and there were multiple occasions when we had to drive this car down the mountain over debris that had fallen into the road small branches things like that as well as a couple of days where there was a lot of ice buildup on the road. And I'm not sure whether it was the ice buildup or the trees, but what ultimately happened was we damaged the underside of this car, not the battery pack. Don't worry, the battery pack is fine. We damaged the, the under engine compartment. I know there's not an engine in there, but the under engine compartment 
um, air dam that sits underneath the car and allows the airflow to be a little bit smoother to get rid of you know nasty turbulence that can affect your range uh, that has has been broken and it no longer attaches to the underside of the vehicle properly the side that's come off is the side that is closest to the battery pack and so we want to put a replacement one on there to make sure that we don't expose the high voltage connectors and other things to road debris or extra road debris that that could potentially cause problems in the future. So what we've done is we rang up the local Chevrolet dealership and I described the part to them. And t tell you what, let's let's just listen to our reenactment of this one. Hey, this is uh, this is Bob Chevrolet. Hi, I have a 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV and the underbody panel, the one that goes from just under the, the front of the bumper all the way to almost to the battery cover has split at the back. I need to order a new one. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. Uh-huh. Yep, I got the part. Yep, that's, uh, it's gonna be 390 bucks. Ow, that's expensive for just a piece of plastic. Well, it's what it says. Okay, well, I guess we'd quite like our car not to have a flappy bit of plastic underneath, so yeah, let's go ahead and order it, and then we'll talk about fitting when it arrives. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, well, we'll, we'll, we'll call you when it's in. So I ordered the part, I thought $390 was a bit expensive, but it was a busy day, I was pretty stressed, and we've tried to keep this car in as good a condition as possible, because the retail value of these bolts is still pretty good. So we decided, okay, we'll, we'll buy the part, and based on the conversation that I had at the time with a part specialist, he said it would only take about half an hour to fit. So we knew that the labor parts for it were not gonna be pretty big. After that, I got a phone call to say that the part was in and we should ring and set up a, an appointment to get the part fitted. And it was then that things got a little screwy because I was told that the part was going to cost two hours worth of labor initially to fit. And that's two hours of labor at $176 per hour. That's more than the part. How much? Well, that's nearly as much as the part itself. Do you really need to take the front bumper off? Well, let me talk to service. Let me put you on hold. Knowing something was wrong, I decided to take matters into my own hands and look online to see how much the part could cost. And then I realized that the part I was being quoted for wasn't actually the part we needed. And then this happened. Hi, this is Nikki again. We just spoke about the underbody part for my partner's Bolt EV. Yeah, I think you've got the wrong part. I've been looking online and the part number doesn't seem to match the one you gave me earlier. Can I just check that, please? Yeah, just give me the last four. Nope, that's the wrong part. The one I need ends in 314. No, no, that's not the part I have here. Okay. Yeah. Well, that one is $168. That's a lot better. Okay, how about fitting? Can you maybe ask the team how much it would cost to fit? Yeah, I'll hold. Uh, they said it's going to cost about 85 bucks to fit. Do you want me to order that part for you? Okay, go ahead and order the part. Thank you. Have a nice day. So I got my coffee. I have a lovely beverage sitting in the cup holder. And it's time to come to the final part of my little story time, namely the lessons that we learned. First off... If you're dealing with a parts counter, it is really important that you make sure that you're talking about the same part. Luckily for most cars, you can find parts catalogs online for free. 
you may have to look for them a little carefully and you may spend some time in Google trying to find exactly the right parts catalogue and exactly the right part. But here in North America, a lot of parts companies allow you to look up parts using your vehicle's VIN number. So you just put in your year, make, model and the car's VIN and then it will tell you what parts are compatible with your vehicle and which ones aren't. That was the first mistake I made. I should have done that first. Then I could have rung up my parts counter and given them the official part number. That would have avoided all of this confusion. The second thing is don't get yourself sucked into the assumption that the dealership is trying to stiff you if the price difference between what you're trying to order and what you're seeing that part advertised online for is particularly large. In my case, the part I was seeing advertised online was about 100 bucks. The dealership was asking me nearly 400. So I should have immediately gone, hang on, are they talking about the right part? Which we weren't. I was able to look up the part number after clarifying with them and I realized pretty quickly that we were talking about a different part. The other thing to bear in mind is even though you might be able to buy that part online for a lot less, sometimes the shipping for those parts is terrible, like super terrible. I looked up the part that we need to fix the underside of this car online and the part itself is listed on various parts sites for like 90 to 95 dollars. My dealership wants to charge me 160 ish dollars for it. They gave me a little bit of a discount after I balked at the price. The disparity between the pricing that my dealership wants to charge and the pricing that is shown on these parts sites is explained partly by the fact that the online parts sites are going to charge you an arm and a leg for shipping. In the case of the part that I need, they wanted to charge me almost, I don't know, almost three times what the part was worth to ship it. I apologize for, for being slightly distracted there. There was a Rivian R1T going down Highway 26 with the manufacturer plates on, which means it was probably the dual motor variant. And I don't know if the camera caught it, but I will put some of that in, in the video for you to see. So in my case, while the part was available online for, for under $100, the part specialist online wanted to charge me $350 to ship that part to me. So it was well worth my time and effort to go through and look up that part number because my dealership, while on the face of it, are gonna charge me nearly twice as much for the part, I don't have to pay for shipping. And so from, a, from a, an economics point of view, it's actually cheaper for me to just get the part from the dealership. The reason why my part is so expensive to ship is because it's quite large and obviously the larger the part, the more expensive it is to ship. The final thing is, if what you're hearing from your dealership doesn't sound right, question them. I should have pushed the issue more. As a woman, I'm very often mansplained to by dealerships who think that I can't possibly know anything about the vehicle that I'm calling them about. And in this case, I think that was a classic example. Bob's Chevrolet, not their real name, I'm not actually going to use their real name in this video, thought that I had no idea what the part was and therefore when I questioned the part removal and their claim that the front bumper would have to come off to fit this part, I should have stopped them there and gone, I've seen the part it doesn't need the front bumper to come off. And that should have been another indicant to me there and then that the part that had been ordered was incorrect and that we were at cross purposes. Luckily, the dealership didn't charge me for the part. They've been able to restock it. I'm not gonna have to pay for it. 
because I was very clear when I rang them that what I needed was the part that went from just under the front bumper to the battery pack and the part that they ordered clearly didn't go all the way to the battery pack. So I think there was some miscommunication there, but at the end of the day, uh, be careful when you are ordering parts for your electric vehicle and don't be afraid to shop around. Had I not got a decent quote from Bob's Chevrolet, I would have just gone and looked elsewhere and so you should too. Anyway, I'm going to concentrate on driving and I'm going to hand over to myself for the final thoughts. If you have a Chevrolet Bolt EV, I would love to know in the comments below how your car is doing, especially if you have one of the OG 2017 models. Have you had your battery replaced yet? How is the new battery working out? Was your battery capacity properly updated rather than incorrectly updated as it was with this Bolt? Leave it all below in the comments or in the Discord chat room. We'll make sure that we leave links below. If you do want more from this channel, make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell and follow the links to regularly support us with a YouTube membership or a Patreon subscription. You'll also find links below to Kofi, Bitcoin and our swag store. And do check us out on Mastodon. We are trying to be as active as we possibly can there. And we have our personal accounts as well as our official TE accounts for you to follow. Scrolling on my right is the list of amazing charged up supporters. If you have recently become a supporter and your name is not there, please be patient. We've had an inordinate amount of amazing people join very recently and we haven't been able to update the list and keep up with the people joining every day, which really makes an amazing difference to the content we can create and the support we're getting. So thank you, even if you're not on the list yet. And shout outs go out to our self-driving team supporters. They are Mike Weeder, Tony Moss, Linda Irish, Sean Tucker, Patrick Boyarski, Paul Nelson, Chris Maxwell, Brian Newton, Michael Goad, Bennett Elder, Andrew Martin, Pedro Moore, Pinheiro, Brophy Wolf, Chris and Michael Johnson, Tazza in the Gong, Dan Blair, Peter Dillinger, Gordon C, Stephen O'Donoghue, Carl Hodgson, Anthony Coates, Regine Fellows, Denny Hyde, Chris Asentar and Jim Burness. Finally, out of this world, thanks to our top tier supporters. They are Robert Flannery, CPU Freak 101, Andrew Glenn, Anonymous Freak, JP Fagerback, Joe Bresney, John Lyons, Rory Litwin, Kevin Burbridge, Dave Kitchen, Aaron Hahn, Laura Reynolds, Marcel Ward, Matthew Drobnak, Paul Conway, Reggie Watts, Will Graylin, and last but not least, Ian. I will be back soon with more content, as will the rest of the team. Don't forget our weekend roundup show, TEN, every Saturday. Our chicken and garden updates over on Take Two, if you are so inclined. But failing that, normal videos will resume on Monday with the lovely Kate talking about oil. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. Yep, it goes from there to there. Yep. It's that long.